Welcome. In this video, we will look at converting decimal numbers to binary numbers. So, in the last time, we looked at how do computers deal with numbers, and we found out that computers use a base two numbering system, meaning that there are only two digits that can be stored, either a zero or a one. And we call these binary digits bits. In the last time, we looked at how do we convert uh, binary numbers to decimal numbers, and in this video we will look at the reverse process. How do we translate a decimal number to a binary number? In order to do this, let's develop a strategy, also called an algorithm. And we're going to do this with an example of translating a decimal word number to a decimal digit number, because we're all familiar how to do this almost automatically, because we've grown, grown up with using decimal numbers. So the task is to translate the word number 3021 and 2 tenths into a decimal digit number. And the first step of the algorithm is to let x be the number to translate, and then we're going to find p, the largest power of 10, that is smaller or equal to this x, the number that we want to translate, and then finally we're going to set the variable n equal to this largest power of 10 p. So let's start with this first step and let x be the number to translate. And in the problem statement, in the example, x is given. It is 3021 and 2 tenths. Then the next step is find p, the largest power of 10, smaller or equal to this number x. And if we look at the word number here, there's 3000, which means that 1000 is 10 to the power 3, and therefore the largest power of 10 smaller or equal to this number would be p equal to 3. And as a last step here, we are going to set n equal to p, which is n equal to 3. The second step of the algorithm is to ask ourselves, how many times does this 10 to the power n fit into the number x? Now, the number x was 3021 and 2 tenths, and our n was equal to 3, so 10 to the power n is 10 to the power 3. So how many times does 1,000 fit into 3,021 and 2 tenths? And as the name implies here, that is three times. So our answer for the translation is that 3,021 and 2 tenths is equal to three times 10 to the power 3. But that's, of course, not the entire number. So now what we're going to do as our third step is to set x to the remainder of the number that has not yet been translated. Which means, if we look down here, uh, 3021 and 2 tenths is equal to 3 times 10 to the power 3. What has not been translated yet is 3021 and 2 tenths minus this 3000, which is 21 and 2 tenths. And then the last step of the algorithm is to look at that remainder. If that remainder is not yet zero, then we are going to reduce n by one and go back to step two. So the remainder in our case is 21 and 2 tenths. That is not equal to zero. So we are going to reduce that number n by one, which gives us n equal to two. And then we're going to go back to step number two. So next step at step number two is how many times does 10 to the power n, so 10 to the power 2, fit into the number 21 and 2 tenths? Well, 10 to the power 2 is 100, and 100 is larger than 21 and 2 tenths, so it fits zero times into this. So down here in where we write our uh, number as the sum of powers of 10, we can write plus zero times 10 to the power 2. Step three was set x to the remainder. Remainder was 21 and uh, 2 tenths, and we're going to subtract 0 times 100 from it, which leaves us again with 21 and 2 tenths. Go on to step number four. What is the remainder? The remainder is still 21 and 2 tenths. That is not equal to 0, and therefore we now have to reduce n by 1 from n equal to 2 to n equal to 1, and then we go back to step number 2. So now how many times does 21 and 2 tenths fit into 10 to the power 1? 10 to the power 1 is 10. If we look at the number 20, right, 10 to the power 1, 10, that fits two times into the number. 2 times 10 is 20. 
So uh, down there, when we express our number, we can now add plus 2 times 10 to the power 1. Next step 3 is set the remainder x to the number not yet translated. We had translated 21 and 2 tenths, and now we have added 2 times 10, so we subtract 20 from 21 and 2 tenths, and we are left with 1 and 2 tenths. Okay, while the remainder x, which is now 1 and 2 tenths, is not 0, and the remainder in our case unfortunately is still not 0, we then reduce n by 1, so we go from n equal to 1 to n equal to 0, and then we go back to step number 2. So our x right now is 1 and 2 tenths, and how many times does 10 to the power n, 10 to the power 0, which is equal to 1, fit into 1 and 2 tenths? Well, the answer is it fits exactly 1 times into this. So next we then can express down at the bottom that our total number also contains 1 times 10 to the power 0. Good, now we set x to the remainder of the number that hasn't been translated yet, which is 1 and 2 tenths minus our new portion, minus 1 times 10 to the power 0, so minus 1, and we're left with 2 tenths. So right now our remainder x is equal to 2 tenths, which is still not equal to 0, so therefore we have to reduce our number n by 1 from n equal to 0 to n equal to negative 1 and go back to step number 2. So at this point now we have x equal to 2 tenths. How many times does 10 to the power negative 1, which is 1 tenth, fit into 2 tenths? Well, that is exactly 2 times. So we can express at the bottom that our number now has an added plus 2 times 10 to the power negative 1. Now at this point we set the remainder again x equal to the number not yet translated. We had 2 tenths, and now we subtract minus 2 times 10 to the power negative 1, so we subtract 2 tenths from 2 tenths, and that now is equal to 0. So when we get here to the fourth step, while the remainder is not 0, well, our remainder at this point is equal to 0, so we are actually done with the translation. And now if we look at the bottom here, we've written out the word number 3021 and 2 tenths by this 3 times 10 to the power 3 plus 0 times 10 to the power 2 plus 2 times 10 to the power 1 plus 1 times 10 to the power 0 and then finally plus 2 times 10 to the power negative 1. And if we write this now out as a decimal digit number, this would translate into 3021.2. So that's how we can translate a number into a decimal digit number if we just do it as a word number to start out with. But we can do the exact same thing with, with binary numbers. All we really need to do is change the base from 10 in our algorithm to the binary base, which is 2. So where does that base 10 appear in our algorithm? Well, it appears in step number 1, right? So the power of 2 instead of the power of 10. And it appears in step number 2, how many times does 10 to the power n fit into the number x? Now we change the 10 to our new base 2 for the binary system, so this becomes then how many times does 2 to the power n fit into the number x? So let's first look at this first step where we let x be the number to translate and we are trying to find p, the largest power of 2 smaller equal to x. Let me write this out as a formula, right? The largest power of p, so 2 to the power of p, that has to be smaller or equal to x. So 2 to the power p smaller equal to x. And p has to be a whole number. So let's solve this equation for p by just taking the logarithm of both sides and we find that p has to be smaller or equal to the logarithm of x divided by the logarithm of 2. But p has to be a whole number, and since p has to be smaller or equal to the right-hand side there, logarithm of x divided by the logarithm of 2, we have to round this number down to the next whole integer. We have to take the floor of the logarithm of x divided by the logarithm of 2. 
Now let's look at step number two. In the binary system, we only have really two digits, the digit zero or the digit one, which means that the digit here will be one if the number x is greater equal to two to the power n, which means it fits into the number x, two to the power n fits into the number x, and if it doesn't, the digit has to be zero. So the answer for two can only be one or zero, but nothing else in the binary system. Okay, so let's do an example for this modified algorithm for binary numbers. Let's translate the decimal number 26.25 into a binary number. So let's start out with step number one. Let x be the number to translate. So x is equal to 26.25. And next up, we find p, the largest power of 2, smaller equal to x, and we have the formula here. So p is equal to, rounded down, the logarithm of 26.25 divided by the logarithm of 2. So if you punch these numbers into your calculator, you have to round down 4.714, and then there are many more digits there. Round it down to the next, des to the next whole number would be p equal to 4. And now the last step of step number one is to set n equal to p, so n in our case now would be equal to 4. Step number two, how many times does 2 to the power n, so 2 to the power 4, fit into the number x? So our number x is 26.25, 2 to the power n, right, that would be 2 to the power 4, which is 16, so now is 26.25 greater equal or smaller than 16? Well, it is greater equal to, which means that this digit has to be a 1. So down there, if we express 26.25 as a binary number, we have 1 times 2 to the power 4. Next up, step 3 is set x equal to the remainder of the number not yet translated. Our current number is 26.25, and we have already translated 1 times 2 to the power 4. So we subtract 1 times 2 to the power 4 from 26.25. It's 26.25 minus 16, which is equal to 10.25. That is our remainder now. And that remainder is not equal to 0. x is equal to 10.25, which means we have to reduce n by 1, we make n equal to 3, and then go back to step number 2. Okay, now we compare x, which is 10.25, to 2 to the power 3, which is equal to 8. And 10.25 is greater equal to 8, therefore the digit here has to be equal to 1. So down there at the bottom we can write that this number is plus 1 times 2 to the power 3. Next up in step three, we set x equal to the remainder of the number, not yet translated, which was 10.25 minus one times two, two to the power three. That's equal to 10.25 minus eight, that's equal to 2.25. That's the number we haven't translated yet. And if you go to step number four, that remainder x equal to 2.25 is not equal to zero. So therefore we have to reduce n by one from three to two and go back to step number two. Now we compare the number 2.25 to two to the power of two, which is equal to four. And in this case, our remainder x is smaller than four, right? 2.25 2 is smaller than four. So therefore the digit now has to be equal to zero and in the bottom we can write plus zero times two to the power two. Next up, set x to the remainder not yet translated. We haven't translated yet 2.25 and now we subtract zero times two to the power two, which is just 2.25 minus zero, which is still 2.25. And this remainder is not yet zero, so therefore we have to reduce n by one from two to one. And then we go back to step number two, and now n is equal to one, so we compare our remainder, 2.25, to two to the power one, which is two. And 2.25 is greater equal to two, so therefore 
the digit now has to be equal to 1 that is associated with 2 to the power 1. So in the bottom we can write plus 1 times 2 to the power 1. Step 3, set x equal to the remainder of the number not yet translated. So we have 2.25, we have now added in the translation 1 times 2 to the power 1, so we subtract 2 from 2.25 and the remainder is 0.25. Now that remainder is still not 0, so we have to reduce the n by 1 from 1 to 0. Go back up to step number 2 and now we're comparing the remainder 0.25 to 2 to the power 0 which is equal to 1. 0.25 is smaller than 1 so therefore the digit is 0 and we can add plus 0 times 2 to the power 0 to our translation. Step number 3. Set x to the remainder not yet translated. So our x was 0.25. We're now subtracting 0 times 2 to the power 0, which is just 0 0.25 minus 0, which is still 0 0.25. And this remainder, 0 0.25, is not equal to 0. So therefore, we have to reduce n by 1 from 0 to negative 1 and go back to step number 2. So now we're comparing 0 0.25 to 2 to the power negative 1, which is 1 half, 0 0.5. And 0 0.25, our remainder, is smaller than 0 0.5, so therefore the digit again will be a 0. And we can write at the bottom plus 0 times 2 to the power negative 1. Step 3, set the remainder. The remainder was 0 0.25 minus, now 0 times 2 to the power negative 1 and that is still 0 0.25. Step 4. The remainder is still not 0, it is 0 0.25, and therefore we have to reduce the number n by 1 from negative 1 to negative 2. And go back to step number 2. So the remainder is 0 0.25. We now compare this to 2 to the power negative 2, which is 0 0.25. And in this case now, 0 0.25 is smaller or equal to 2 to the power negative 2. So therefore, sorry, is greater equal to 2 to the power negative 2. Well, actually, it is equal. So therefore, the digit has to be equal to 1. So in the bottom, we can write now plus 1 times 2 to the power negative 2. Step 3, set x to the remainder, not yet translated. So we had x is equal to 0 0.25, and now we subtract the new part that we have translated. So we subtract 1 times 2 to the power negative 2, which is 0 0.25 minus 0 0.25, which gives us a remainder of 0. So when we now come finally to step number 4, we see that our remainder now finally is equal to 0 and we can stop the algorithm. Okay. So at this point here we've written the decimal number 26.25 as the sum of a digit, either 1 or 0, multiplying a power of 2. And remember um, what this meant, that the binary point was between the digits that multiplied 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power negative 1. So I can now write this number as 11010.01. So that's basically the algorithm to translate, and you've already seen probably one of the hallmarks of numerical methods and numerical algorithms, that they are using simple math, but many, many times. So many, many operations have to be done to do this translation, which can become tedious if done by hand, but that's why in this class we will explore doing these algorithms on the computer, because computers are perfect for doing repetitive tasks that are simple, can be expressed in simple maths. Thank you for watching.